So Matt Taibbi revealed uh, the collusion between Twitter and the government, Twitter and political organizations and corporations to censor people, American citizens on social media, which is a violation of First Amendment. So there was a problem. They were supposed to. So just look at who this guy is. This guy's name is Jim Baker, <laughs> and he used to be at the FBI, and then he was the deputy general counsel of Twitter. How long? Now, now this is important. This is why is this important? Because here's the story. They were supposed to get out more information. So the the first batch of of leaks about what was going on in the censoring behind the scenes at Twitter, the first batch of leaks was released by Matt Taibbi last Friday. They were supposed to be more that were supposed to get released to Barry Weiss. She's that former New York Times reporter yeah. who we made fun of and got five million views. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she deserved it at the time. So um but here, so there, it wasn't coming out. They, they, we can now tell you the part of the reason why on Tuesday, Twitter, why the, 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 the rest of the stuff didn't come out right away. Because on Tuesday, Twitter Deputy General Counsel and former FBI General Counsel, so this FBI guy working over at the goddamn social media, right in it. Just like how they hired the CIA now, they used to they used to have the CIA used to bribe journalists to go say stuff, but now they just bring the guy on from the CIA to say. It. <laughs> he was part of the uh, Jim the Fox in the henhouse division of. Uh, <laughs> yes. So this guy Jim Baker, who was fired, but among the reasons vetting so. The process for producing the Twitter files involved delivery to two journalists, Barry Weiss and him, via lawyer close to the new management. However, after the initial batch, things became complicated. Uh, one Over the weekend, while we were both dealt with obstacles and searches, it was Barry Weiss who discovered that the person in charge of releasing these files was freaking FBI guy. Their general counsel. That was the guy who was in charge of releasing them. What? And he was taking stuff out before he released them. So here, the first batch of files reporters received was marked Spectra Baker emails. Spectra Baker. Baker. That's him. Okay. Baker is a controversial figure. He has been something of a zealot of for FBI controversies dating back to 2016, from the Steele dossier to the Alpha server mess. He resigned in 2018 after an investigation into leaks to the press. So this guy's a big leaker at the FBI. He pushed Russia Gate, all that phony fake stuff. This is the guy who's in charge of censorship at the goddamn Twitter. He was the guy who was in the way. So the news that Baker was reviewing the Twitter files surprised everyone involved, to say the least. New Twitter chief Elon Musk asked him quickly to exit Baker on Tuesday. By the way, if you look up Jim Baker, I googled Jim Baker and Biden. Oh, well, oh okay. <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, Elon, how did you forget to fire that guy? Yeah, that's you, it's really baffling to me. Like, oh, he still works here. The guy from the FBI. What? Well, yeah, the guy who did weird. RussiaGate. That guy's still here. I mean, that guy who's got, got caught leaking stuff to the press. That guy's still here. Why? How did you not fire that guy? So and then if you try to if you try to Google that guy, Jim <laughs> Baker and Biden. Wow. Looks like Jim Baker already has a job at Google. <laughs> it looks like the results below are changing quickly. If this topic is new, it can sometimes take time for reliable sources to publish information. Check the source. Are they trusted on the topic? Fucking certainly Google isn't trustworthy. Trusted by who? Trusted by who? Nobody trusts the fucking corporate media. They have lower trust than the goddamn Congress. Nobody trusts them. Trusted media. I can't believe that Baker piece of shit was working at Google this whole time. I, it some, doesn't make sense to me how the, he would just be there. And, you mean that Twitter? Yeah. And yeah. Elon's like, oh, that guy works here? How did he not know that guy was there? So Elon says, in light of concerns about Baker's possible role in suppression of information important to the public dialogue, he was exited. What does that mean? I, that means fired. Oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> weird but a weird, what that. a weird way to say it. <laughs> right. Uh, he was exited from Twitter. Then they, oh, was he asked to explain himself first? And he said, yes. His explanation was unconvincing. <laughs> <laughs> 
unconvincing, like the Steele dossier is unconvincing, or hot sauce in Hillary's purse unconvincing. <laughs> Which unconvincing was it? On a scale of hot sauce in Hillary's purse all the way up to the Steele dossier, <laughs> how unconvincing was his? So here is this guy we're talking about. His name is Jim Baker, FBI spook, who was working at goddamn Twitter as the general counsel. <laughs> So this is from uh, the Epic well, the Times. Warrants. He's the guy that signed off on them. So you want to know yeah. about this guy? So it was in his role that he not only was responsible for reviewing FISA warrants against Trump's 2016 presidential campaign aide Carter Page, which were later found by the Department of Justice Inspector General Michael Horowitz to contain numerous flaws, meaning lies, but also aided his. He also aided his friend. Clinton 2016 presidential campaign lawyer Michael Sussman in delivering fabricated data to the FBI's Crossfire Hurricane team that was investigating the Trump campaign. So Crossfire Hurricane was what led to Russiagate. That's when they were spying on the Trump campaign, saying they were working with Russia. It was all made up. But they and then he had to get fake FISA warrants. So this guy was crucial in getting the FISA warrants, which were t later shown to be fraudulent, that they kept stuff from the FISA court. Of course, they always do. And they shouldn't have ever been able to get those FISA. Warrants. They were tapping Trump and his entire campaign's phones. OK, well, that's bad. But I think none of it measures up to the scandal of Trump University. Sa uh, not, I'm, none, of it, I'm no, <laughs> none of it, Sam Harris. So what this means when they get the FISA warrants and they get a that, that means they can tap Carter Page's phone. So there's a two hop rule, meaning you can tap Carter Page's phone and anybody Carter Page talked to and anybody they talked to. So that's everybody in the Trump campaign. So they were. So that's what's going on. So. Uh, so, okay, so they fabricated data, but it did give us a lot of riveting Rachel Maddow episodes. You yeah, got to say that. The best season of Maddow. <laughs> I, wa I still want to know who fabricated that story, The Walls Are Closing In. Remember that? That was my favorite <laughs> one. Pushed that and, one pretty and they hard. all reported it. <laughs> okay. Uh, the data falsely alleged that then presidential candidate Trump was maintaining a secret communications channel with the Kremlin via Russia's Alpha Bank. So that's part of that data, fabricated data, <clears throat> that he helped deliver to the FBI. When Sussman, with Clinton's lawyer, when Sussman was charged with lying about his role in bringing the false data to Baker. By the way, this false story, this Russiagate false story, a story Bill Maher still believes in till this day. The alpha, he yelled at Matt Taibbi, like, what about the server? What the about alpha the bank? alpha server? Yeah, it's make completely... I'm sure you know better, Bill Maher, than the, the yeah, guy that... Yeah, than Matt Taibbi. <laughs> yeah. So when Sussman, when Clinton's lawyer, was charged with lying about his role in bringing the false data to Baker, when he was charged with lying to the FBI and making up a Russiagate... Baker failed to provide the team on special counsel John Durham with a key text message from Sussman. So Sussman texted this guy, Jim Baker, who's in charge over at Twitter. Uh, and Baker hid that, e that text because it would incriminate him. <laughs> he hid that from the Justice Department. This guy who's in charge of, of censoring, apparently, over at Twitter. Vetting. He vets Vetting. Yeah. When he, when he finally handed over the message to Durham six months after Sussman's indictment, the trial judge threw out the evidence because it had come too late. Oh, oh shucks. <laughs> <clears throat> the documents released thus far paint the picture of Twitter leadership influencing the outcome of the 2020 election in favor of Biden. An opinion poll taken soon after the election found that Biden would have lost 16 percent of his vote had voters been aware that the FBI was investigating the information on Hunter Biden's laptop. Oh, well, then that explains that they couldn't take that chance. 16 <laughs> percent. Well, I guess it's not a nothing burger of a thing. I guess it's not a nothing burger then. That's the thing. If it's, it's such a nothing, why are you working so hard to suppress yeah, it? If it's nothing, why do you want to censor it? If it's just dick pics, who cares? Well, we can't verify this. We got to work. You know how we work so hard to verify if the Trump P tape was real? Before <laughs> we it yeah. We got to really take our time. It's a bit difficult. This is what Glenn Greenwald says. He says it's a bit difficult to maintain the U.S. security state had no role 
in Twitter censorship regime when the general counsel of the FBI centrally involved in Russiagate and all sorts of politicized abuses ended up as Twitter's deputy general counsel with pause in everything. By now, the evidence is overwhelming that the United States security state is heavily involved in pressuring big tech to censor Americans' free speech. Zuckerberg said this. Twitter executives has admitted it. Tons of documents prove it. Only liberal journalists and Democratic functionaries try to put this in doubt. <laughs> they go, so what? You're crazy. And also, we need more of it. <laughs> <laughs> so... I, I don't know what else to say about this. There's people who the, on Twitter uh, just uh, bending over backwards trying to pretend this isn't a real story. Hey, what do you, what can be said that has already been blurted out by Sam Harris like a fucking idiot? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody wrote an article. Did you see it? I saw the headline. I haven't read it yet. It's called The, the End of Faith in Sam Harris. Have you read that? That's a great art. It's a great headline, isn't it? I, yeah. yeah I, wow. The end, because he wrote that book, The End of Faith, or something like that. What didn't he write a book like that? Sam. That's Harris? amazing to watch. I mean, the irony of that is just beautiful. His atheist thing, and he clings yeah. to irrationality. Cl like, that, well, he's again, he's ex he is the thing he claims to hate, uh, and he, he he has a Trump in his shadow, so meaning he's willing to cheat. Yeah. He's willing to cheat and lie Sometimes and censor and take away people's freedoms and civil rights and civil liberties to forward his agenda. Mandated Ju vaccine in him? Just man mandated vaccines, and he lied about that stuff and slandered his friends over it. So he does everything he claims Trump does. Sam Harris actually does. Classic Jungian psychology. Sam Harris is Trump, just like Jenk Uger is Trump. Keith Olbermann is Trump. They are the same people. The people who are have triggered the worst by Trump have him in their shadow and they project their own shittiness onto him, which is why they're so, so triggered by Trump N instead of being triggered by the system that gave you Trump or a system that let black and brown people be so di uh, uh, discouraged that they stopped voting for Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump, that they didn't show up to vote. That's what I'm upset about, that system. But they're upset about Trump because Trump's in their shadow. That's amazing. Hey, we're doing live stand-up comedy in Los Angeles, December 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th. And we're going to be in Tempe, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Nashville. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. See you there.